sometimes when you look at figure photos, toy photos posted by other photographers online, and they appeared to be rather sharp compared to your very own photos, and you are left wondering, why are my photos not sharp enough? Is it something wrong with my technique in photography? Or is it something wrong with my camera or the lens not being good enough? So most of the time, I would say 90 to 95% has to do with user error or more like a lack of understanding on how your camera works. So with this video today, I'm going to tell you guys how to get sharper photos by making sure you get your focusing right while doing toy and figure photography. Hello and welcome to Exclu Gani Blog and Photography. My name is Steven and with today's video, I'm going to give you guys a very important tip in toy and figure photography, which is how to get sharper photos when you're photographing your figurines. It sounds like a topic that has been discussed countless times, right? So many times you will find a lot of videos, tutorials online telling you how to get sharper photos in photography in general. So there is a specific issue that is unique to figure photography and I would like to discuss about it in today's video. So as I mentioned in the earlier parts of this video, sometimes when you take photos of the figures, it is more of a lucky draw. Yeah, lucky draw. Maybe half of your shots are in focus, the other half are not. And you are very sure that your focusing technique is correct. You were even on a tripod, maybe even using a timer, yet your photos are missed focus. The eyes aren't quite as sharp when you zoom into the figures face to check. So what actually went wrong? It has to do with the autofocus system. Now, this doesn't mean your camera is crap or your lens is not good enough. You need to understand how the autofocus system in a camera works in the first place. So regardless of whether you're using a DSLR through the viewfinder or the back screen or a mirrorless camera, it doesn't matter what kind of dedicated camera you're using, the autofocus works in a very similar fashion. So when you are photographing a close object, you lock focus on a close object. The camera knows that you are doing close up photography. You are photographing something in close proximity. The camera knows it. So, regardless of whether you're using what autofocus mode, single point autofocus, pinpoint autofocus, automatic detection, doesn't matter which mode you are in, the camera knows they are photographing something near to the camera. We call it close up photography. So, in this kind of scenarios, the camera autofocus system will always prioritize the closest object to the camera in terms of physical distance. Let's say you place your autofocus box on a figure's face. The box should be relatively large. And you half press, the camera confirms focus locked, and then you take the shot. Yet, the shot is still a bit blurry, ever so slightly blurry. So, the problem with this is that autofocus systems always prioritize the closest object to the camera in terms of physical distance. So what does this mean? When you look at a figurine from the side, the side view of a figure, right, you look from the side, you will notice that the face of the figurine, the face plate is recessed behind the hair. The hair is often in front and then the eyes are right behind it. So what happens is that sometimes the camera will lock focus on the hair in front instead of on the eyes. The eyes is probably 2, 3 or 5 millimeters behind the hair fringes in front. So essentially, your photos are missed focused or front focused by a few millimeters, which is why they are never sharp. You will notice that the hair in front is rather sharp, but not the eyes, because that is where the camera focused at. The type of figuring you are photographing will affect the probability chances of the camera miss focusing or not. For example, if you are focusing on Nandroid, you are photographing Nandroids, their eyes are so large 
that you will almost never miss focus with any autofocus system in any camera. However, when you're dealing with a scale figure like this, things get a bit challenging. Now, how does a camera detect what to focus in the first place? There are two things to look out for, color and contrast. So, if your figure has a very bright, very colorful eye, for example, the figure has a white color hair and red color eyes, yeah, most likely the camera will lock the focus correctly on the eyes despite the eyes being recessed behind the hair. But if you are dealing with a figurine, for example, this figure of Makise Kuisu from Good Smile Company. So you see, her eyes are fairly pale in color. And then the colors on her hair are a lot richer, more contrasty. And in this kind of scenarios, more than often, your camera will lock focus on the hair instead of on the eye and you will have a misfocused photo. It will happen very frequently, I guarantee you. So, colors and contrast are a major factor. So, if the eyes are very pale or not rich in color, very pale in color, and then you have a hair, the hair which is richer in color, then you can expect the camera to misfocus. And then the next thing is that the figure design itself naturally. For example, this figure by Alter. You see her hair is almost covering her eyes. You can only see a bit of her eye in between the hair strands. I will guarantee you 95 or 100% of the time the camera will not lock focus on the eye because the hair is getting in the way in the first place. So this is something to be expected. There is nothing wrong with your camera. That is how the autofocus system works and if this happens too often, you will have to resort to manual focusing which is to switch to manual focus mode and then you zoom in your live view and you will rotate the focus ring until you get the maximum contrast or sharpness on the back of the camera screen on the figure's eye. Then only you set a timer and take the shot. If you do critical focusing, which is to zoom in in live view, zoom to the eye, quick focus, yeah, you will get the shot perfectly sharp most of the time. Unless you made a mistake somewhere else, such as not using a timer while you're using a slow shutter speed. So in that case, you might encounter camera shake blur. So yes, there's one issue with autofocus. They lock focus on the closest part of the figure. And then the next problem has to do with the surroundings you are photographing your figure in. Now cameras, they are different from the human eye. What we perceive our human eye as being bright enough is considered not bright enough or a bit dark for the camera sensor. So more than often, if you are photographing your figures indoors, not outdoors, indoors, and without any sort of lighting, the chances of the camera misfocusing is a lot higher. So when what the camera sees is that it's relatively dark. The camera sensor is seeing something relatively dark, which means it cannot differentiate which area in the scene is higher contrast. For example, if you have hair and you have shadow under the under the hair, which is obscuring the eye, yes. The camera is very likely to misfocus. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Your surrounding ambient light, very important. And then you need to know about DSLRs, especially this viewfinder on top here. You will see dots in the autofocus system. When you use an autofocus system in a DSLR via the viewfinder, which is to shoot through the top piece, top eyepiece over here, I always use AFS autofocus system, single point autofocus, which means you will be choosing only one specific dot, move the dot to the figure's eye, lock focus and take a shot. Don't use auto area autofocus, which means you let the camera decide what to focus. If you let the camera decide which point to use, yes, you will miss focus most of the time because the camera will choose to focus on the closest object in a scene, which can be the figure's arm, shirt, hair or elsewhere, but not the eye. So always use single point autofocus. If you are on autofocus, 
but otherwise just put your camera on a tripod, use live view that is more foolproof, you will get the focus hit rate a lot higher most of the time. And then one last thing about focusing on your figures is that it has to do with the depth of feel, DOF. So sometimes when you take a very close shot of a figure, a very close one, for example, you took a head shot, one eye will be in focus, the other eye is out of focus. So some people are not bothered by it, some people they care about that. So when you are focusing at a very close distance, what happens is that the closer your focusing distance is, the nearer you are to the figure, the less depth of field you have, which means the less amount of area will be in focus. This is physics, this is normal physics. So when the depth of field, the amount of area that will be in focus is so thin and so little, you will reach a point where only one eye is in focus and the other eye is out of focus. So in this kind of scenario, what can you do? You only have two options. One way is to drop your aperture to very small values, f5.6, f7.1 for example. Sometimes in small apertures of f5.6, f6.3, only one eye will be in focus because you are very close to the figure or you are using a very long focal length, a 100mm lens for example. So in this kind of scenarios, what you can do is you have to do manual focus. That is your only option. In live view mode, you will tweak your focus ring until there is a balance or equal sharpness between both eyes before you take the shot. And that is about it for today's video. I hope this piece of information is helpful to you guys. If you do have any questions regarding photography in general, please do not hesitate to drop down a comment in and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day and I shall see you again. Goodbye.